So this is a problem from the British Math Olympiad 2009 round 2. I actually first saw this problem on Flammable Maths channel. I'll put a link to his video on it in the description below. Um, he made a really interesting video on it, but I, uh, and his solution was, was kind of cool. I think this problem is actually quite a lot easier than what he made out to be though. Um, I think there's a, there's, there are ways to do this much faster. Um, but anyway, have a go at the problem, try it yourself, watch his video, watch my video, who cares. Um, yeah, let's, let's get into it. Now, the first thing, this is a number theory problem, right? You know it's a number theory problem because it's talking about integers, um, and that's what number theory is. And and whenever we're thinking of number theory, we're thinking of prime factorizations. So, Flower Math said that the obvious thing to do here would be to square both sides, or times by the conjugate. I actually don't think that's what the obvious thing to do here is. Given this is a number theory problem, the obvious thing to do is to consider root 2009 and see whether or not you can simplify that. Um, so let's think about its prime factorization then, um, because that will help us to maybe simplify the third, um, uh, which will be good. Now, it's, it, this clearly isn't divisible by 2, because it ends in a 9, not by 3, because the sum of the digits is 11, which isn't divisible by 3. Uh, 5, it would have to either end in a 0 or a 5, so that doesn't work either. Uh, now, 7, Flower Maths um, got to this point, and he, he shared a really uh, cool... A divisibility trick check for, for 7, which I have seen before and have legitimately never used because I do not understand why you would ever do that check when you could just get out a bus stop and test it and if it's a dec decimal then great it's not divisible by 7 but if it actually turns out to be a, a, a number which uh, integer number then great it is. Um, so yeah, this is divisible by 7, it's 7 times uh, 287. So I can write it like this. And then I can, again, just consider this number and go, okay, is, is that prime, or can I factorize that a little bit? Um, and again, 2, 3, and 5 don't work, so the next thing to check is 7, which again, you can just do a bus stop to do, and very quickly you realize that it, it is. So this is root 7, root 7, root 41, but root 7 times root 7 is 7. So this is 7 root 41, and 41 is prime. I just know that that's prime. So we're looking at this question, and we're thinking about how to solve this now. And um, again, for integers a and b. Uh, and, and what we consider is, well, actually, adding up thirds when we've got two different numbers here sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. If you're trying to add up two different primes, y you just can't do that, right? You can't simplify this in any meaningful way, right? This is kind of locked here. What is the only circumstance you could actually add roots together in? Well, if they're the same prime, you can do it. Right? Like if they're the same prime, you can just say root 3 plus root 3 is, well, 2 root 3. But then, of course, 2 is root 4, and then you can multiply those together to make root 12. And it seems like you've made like a different third here, or a different square root, but you haven't really. This is just a root 3 thing. It's just 2 root 3. You've just unsimplified it. Um, now, the other case in which you can add together thirds or square roots is you don't have to have them be the same prime. You can add them up, but one of them has to be some interesting multiple of the actual prime that you're considering, in this case 3. Because 27 is 9 times 3, and 9 is, is, is 3 squared, you can write root 27 as 3 root 3, add it to this 3 root 3 to make 6 root 3, and again, you can unsimplify that to this. And it seems like you've done something really cool, again, to make this, but actually, all you're doing is considering the root 3s. Like, this is just a root 3 problem, um, just some multiples of root 3, and you can magically make this number, apparently. But, like, all this is really saying is, if you're adding up two roots, and you're making apparently this, but really this, 7 root 41. These have to be some form of 41. In the same way, to make root 108, although 108 seems like an interesting number, it's just a root 3 thing. So the things that you add together have to be root 3 things. So to make this add to this to make this, these have to be root 41s. Um, and so the next few lines are going to seem really obvious, having said all of, uh, of that, maybe, or having not said all of that. But the only way to add two things together to make 7 root 41 is to do 0 root 41 plus 7 root 41, or 1 root 41 plus 6 root 41, or 2 plus 5, or 3 plus 4, or 4 plus 3, and so on. Except when we get to this one, we realize, well, this is just the same as this, right? We're just going to get the opposite pair of solutions. Um, so we can actually just stop there and just say that these are actually our only four uh, valid possible solutions here. And then we can just work out what root A and or what, what A and B are given these. So 0 root 41 is just 0. Um, 7 root 41 is, is root 49 root 41 times these two things together. No prizes for learning that that's root 2009. And so our solution is, because 0 can be cleverly written as root 0, our solution is A is 0, B is 2009, or vice versa. 
And that's our first pair of solutions, which is of course the trivial solution that you hopefully spotted as soon as you looked at the problem for longer than two seconds. Uh, but then we look on to the next, next one and we say, well, we've got one root 41 plus six root 41, but six can be written as root 36. And we can put these two numbers together and we get our second solution of A is 41 or B is 1476, again, or vice versa. And we just keep doing this. Those are two pairs. Um, we'll get the last two pairs by doing these ones. Um, of course, the other, the, the mirrored um, additions going down here are just the vice versa solutions I would have said before. Um, so that's why I'm not doing them. Um, 2 is root 4, 5 is root 25, put these things together to make root 164 plus root 1025, that's our third solution, um, again you could have flipped those around if you wanted to, and our last solution, root 9, root 16, times them together, and we'll get this pair as well. And that will be all four pairs, and um, and yeah, quite a nice problem, uh, quite an easy problem for BMO round 2, I think, I think a competent GCSE student with some nudging should probably be able to do this. Um, but in any case, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.